Hutchison. I am here. This is episode one of season two, Strange Famous, coming to you live from the Soldier Fit Studios right here in Frederick, Maryland. I am excited, nervous, anxious to tell you guys all about what we're doing. Uh, Basically, we are making some effort to raise money for veterans. And I brought some cool people here to do that with me. I got Bob. He's pretty cool. He's kind of a big deal. Uh huh. <laughs> so Bob and I are going to talk about life. We're going to talk to some guests that I brought in today, and we're also going to raise some money for veterans through Platoon Twenty Two. Uh, so Platoon Twenty Two is a program that is creating awareness and helping veterans because, on average, twenty two veterans commit suicide every day. And it's something that really means a lot to me. I know it means a lot to our community. And the new Veteran Services Center right here in Frederick is doing a lot to help veterans. So Bob and I are here to kick some ass, take some names, and raise some cash. We're literally blonde gold diggers coming on camera. Bob's just clickbait. That's what I brought him in for. I told him I prepared him for that. Mm -hmm. But he's ready. He's okay. Uh, So Bob, I would like to first just tell people a little bit about how I met you. How did you meet me? Do you remember how we met? Um, it was in a gas station. It was in a gas station. Do you remember what happened? I don't remember why I was there other than getting gas, but I was in Hagerstown. Mm-hmm. AC&T. Is that what it was? Yeah, by the Prime Outlets. I think I was going shopping for uh, <laughs> Adirondack chairs <laughs> in the parking Goodness, lot. Goodness, for Adirondack chairs. I think so. I was like, that is a beautiful car, and that guy, his hair. (laughs) And I was... Dang, I was like, who is that? His hair was just, like, blowing in the wind. I I think I had to pee. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I think I I followed you inside. I I don't think I got I came up to you, right? Yeah, you did. Yeah. I came up to you, and I was like... And you pretended like you knew me. I was like, do I know you? Who are you? Right? Yeah. And then I told you my name, and then you friend requested me. What What did I say? I said, uh, uh, I get that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or and that was it. You, you thought I was somebody else. It was, was so like, mysterious. Ah, I, I was like, what the hell just happened? I went home, and I told my boyfriend, I was like, dude, I just met this guy. I'm pretty sure he's, like, strange famous, you know? And here we are. Here now we are. really are strange famous yeah. together on a show talking about how we met. But... We played golf. We've done a lot since then. That was a few years ago. We played that was golf. like five years ago. Yeah. yeah. So since then, we've played golf together. We've yeah. done some business stuff, you know. And what's cool about Bob is so many things, but one thing is that he's a bris- brilliant businessman. Mm. Would you consider yourself a brilliant businessman? I'm, I'm what they call lucky. Oh, come on now. <clears throat> you know what luck is. We all know that. I mean, it's a long story, but... Uh, it's it's a simple case of learning what not to do mm-hmm. and learning that education from you know years of experience of everything in life, all facets. So you started off in music. How old were you when you started playing mm. guitar? Um, I started out playing drums first. For just for fun at school as a kid at home? Well, my uncle had a drum kit that he didn't have a place to keep it, so he kept it at my my parents' house where mm-hmm. I lived, and I was probably, I don't know, seven. Was it Smithsburg? No, it was in Imesville. Imesville, yeah, okay. Yeah, pretty local. And um, so I started banging on the drums, and he showed me a couple things. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then, of course, you start learning who your influences are at that time. Yeah. It was, uh, FM radio was hot. You, lar- you learn about bands like Led Zeppelin and... and um, and and the Beatles and and next thing you know, I started thinking, man, guitar's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, I actually uh, was playing drums with a, with a, a guy that played guitar, and um, it turned out I wasn't that good of a drummer. So um, we, st- I just uh, my mom picked up a guitar at a yard sale. Really? And, That's and, so cool. And, and I still have that guitar. So oh, yeah. I was probably, I was pretty young. And it was a Tysco Del Rey. I still have it. And um, 
Yeah, so I've been playing guitar a long time now. Like so were you one of those kids probably. that like picked it up and you heard a song and you could like yeah. kind of hear it and play it back? Yeah, and of and course we didn't. Like we didn't have YouTube right. and, and internet. That's how my brother learn. was like just gifted. Like he could just figure it out. To- I was always so envious. Yeah, like, totally man, I wish I had ear. that gift. Yeah, yeah totally about you. That's so awesome. And then, so what was the first band you played in? Mm. <clears throat> so I think in school it was either middle school. I think I. I Played with some friends in a little band called Straight Jacket, I think it was. And we just did covers and, mm-hmm. and um, FM music, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and the, I did that for a long time, actually. Really? Yeah. Until how old? Uh, I mean, until I, f- right after I graduated, I did graduate uh, from Linganore in 87. I left that week for Los Angeles. So that's when things started to get a little crazy. What happened? Well, it was Mm pre-grunge, pre-internet. AIDS had just blown up, so that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, The bar scene was crazy. I show up to Los Angeles, um, working with a group of people and and a couple producers, and and, and I'm playing really well. but uh, I was one of the few blondes, and I had that Maryland redneck accent. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that was different. You're in a war shikar? Everybody, yeah, everybody <laughs> else was out there um, talking about, um, you know, Maryland crab cakes and my accent. And I didn't have jet black hair, which, which was, you know, the thing mm-hmm. in 87. So, um, but, you know. Jet black hair. Again, I learned a lot about what not to do. From, from that whole experience, and, and um, I still have some friends out there, and mm-hmm. it's, um, it's amazing that it's been, you know, almost 40 years since Since that. you were there, yeah. Yeah. So, first big band, what was the first big stage you stepped on? Oh, wow. Well, I, I mean, I've been on a lot of stages, and i played in front of a lot of people. Uh, m- most recently... I mean, way back then, I can't remember so much, but there was a lot of local things. Shiley Acres here in, in West Virginia, and, and there was a few big shows in California. Um, I did some huge shows in Mexico, Mexico City, Guadalajara. Um, I did a lot of fill-in work, a lot of session work. Um, but most recently, I, I mean, the last couple of years playing with Kicks, it's been. Um, I mean, it's just been great. It's a yeah. lot of big, sh- yeah. Gettysburg Bike Week. I think we had over twenty thousand um, recently. In uh, well, we headline M three Festival at Meriwether Post Pavilion every. Uh, you guys Friday. have such a big, like, yeah. such a loyal following it of is, local uh, Maryland people too. I mean, insane followers. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Kicks um, fan base is is probably the most incredible loyal fan base to any band especially here locally but even across the country I, i've seen the mm-hmm. fan base just incredibly loyal after uh, so many years they just remain loyal it's crazy yeah. i can't imagine i mean i've had dreams like that's one of my dreams is like i'll have a dream where i'm like on stage and like singing and i'm really fucking awesome you know <laughs> that's like one of my dreams that i actually have like the legit and i think it's just like the coolest feeling you know is that what you are you addicted to that feeling no you don't no, do you no. get nervous i play guitar I like that's that. it you just like to play don't get guitar. nervous I, there could be 13 people or thirteen thousand people the the thing for me is as a musician i I just want to play my, I want to hear my guitar. Mm-hmm. And, and I, when the band is playing good, regardless of who the band is, it's just great. When everything falls into place, it's just good. That's so and, cool. And it's, um, you know, the byproduct of, of hard work and, and, and the whole paying your dues thing or whatever is to be able to perform in front of people that can appreciate it. Um, but no, there's no, like, ego addiction thing. I don't, like, need people to click on me to Mm -hmm. it doesn't doesn't do anything for me i'd rather just you know make sure the band is tight just do my job but it's got to feel good when there's a lot of people singing it helps (laughs) yeah it's really it's really neat yeah the energy you know what i mean i I played a festival in denver colorado um not too long ago and and uh it was the first time i had taken a minute for myself to listen to 
uh, how the crowd was responding and singing back some of the anthems mm -hmm. and the iconic songs, not just for, for kicks, but for some of the other artists that we were playing with uh, of a similar, that similar genre. And I, I was blown away by thousands and thousands of people singing back these lyrics. It was just crazy. I can't imagine. Yeah. yeah. That's so the first cool. time I really paid a lot of attention to it, where I was like watching people's mouths and, mm -hmm. and, 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 um, and like listening to them. Like all one unit yeah. together. They were having, yeah. And then we were taking them straight back to 1987 or 85 or, or whatever. And, awesome. and uh, yeah, they were, they were in the zone. So you went from doing that, being on tour full time, I'm guessing? For we're, how long were you on tour? Well, we're touring now, right now. I mean, I took a break in the 90s. Um, I, I, the internet really wrecked a lot of things for our industry. Mm -hmm. And um, the live music scene was doing really well, but grunge had kind of put a damper on, on things in terms of w what we were used to. Uh, with live just rock and roll. As a lead guitar player, grunge was not very good for us. Really? But we needed a break. I mean, yeah. the, the music scene was, MTV was driving everything. The record companies were really kind of manipulating things to the point where they were taking away a lot of artist freedoms. And, and uh, it was just, it, we needed a, a big speed bump. Yeah. Yeah. And then you came back home and started copper mine applicators well yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah, my family had been in the uh, construction industry f since the late 50s early 60s my my family my dad and um so you know that was the that was the default that was mm -hmm. a plan b hey I, i'm not I, I had worked with a lot of producers and i had met a lot of people and i had done a lot of things and i just kind of come to the realization that it wasn't for me yeah, I mean, you made a good choice. I, I mean, think so. You're doing really well. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. and and at this point in my life, um, I have the freedom now to do to kind of go back and redo some things uh, as a musician um, that I probably wouldn't be able to do had I not quit sure. and and started um, uh, you know a construction company. Yeah, I mean, I think that if you don't fail somewhere you don't really grow you know what i mean you got to learn mm. from some of your mistakes before you can really grow i think yeah, that, that yeah. that's what makes you resilient there's right? so many things that that i um that i learned uh, again it's not just the music industry or construction it's just life you know mm -hmm. you, you just pay attention to what's going on around you and try to surround yourself with all the right people the best people that you possibly can both in business and and socially Yep. And things will turn out okay. That's why I like hanging out with you, Bob. <laughs> you're That's better, why I like golfing with you. And you're a better golfer than me, though. So <laughs> yeah, but somebody's got to drive me home. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting better. I'm getting better. <laughs> well, I think that you know we should go golfing soon if before this, it gets too cold out. Would if, be good if the weather would straighten out. Yeah, sure, that'd be great. I think that's a good idea. All right, I think we're going to take a break here for a second, and then we're going to bring in our next guest. So Bob and I are going to bring on camera uh, our friend Russ from WLC Design, and we'll see him here in just a second. Stay tuned. Strange Famous will be back. 